if you're thinking about buying or selling a home in Oregon or Southwest Washington in 2024, I'm going to cover the most recent MLS data. We're going to talk about what's transpired so far. We're about halfway through the year. We'll take a look at uh, what's going on right now. So the most recent data will kind of tell us what we should expect and what we can possibly project out for the rest of the year. And then we'll talk about how that's going to translate for both buyers and sellers. Stick around. Everyone, welcome back to the channel. Living in Oregon, I'm your host, Seth Marchant, licensed broker in the state of Oregon and Washington. Thanks for coming on this walk and talk with me today. It's a great day for a walk and talk actually in Oregon. We've got a little bit of a heat wave going on. Is it hot where you're at? I know looking online, seeing a lot of my friends throughout the country, it's definitely hot in some places, especially my friends in Phoenix. I'm not envious of you uh, Phoenix friends stuck indoors right now. Uh, especially midday, which is when I'm shooting this video. It's about two o'clock right now. So one of the nice things about Oregon is even though it does get really hot sometimes, not so hot that we actually can't go out in the midday. I am jealous of my Phoenix friends with the pools though. We don't have the pools here uh, in Oregon like you guys do. Okay, so let's talk about what's happening so far with the real estate market. The latest data, always part of the conversation is gonna be inventory, so always looking at new listings and right now new listings a little bit of a surprise new listings are down year over year and down month over month and not by a small percentage either a little bit of a surprise because it's a little bit early in the year to be seeing those numbers and there was some talk about uh, pent-up sellers around the winter time uh, i covered this uh, we make these videos about once a quarter so about six months ago i covered this in my video talking about a lot of sellers out there that have those golden handcuffs meaning they have uh, an interest rate that's not willing to trade for the current interest rate almost half of the country over half of the country has uh, four percent or lower and it's a pretty big chunk that has three percent right now the 30 year as i'm shooting this actually has dipped down uh, just under seven uh, it's like 6.82%, I think, actually, which is the lowest it's been in, in a couple of months, but it's been pretty persistent at seven. So there's was this talk because inventory has been low that there's a lot of people that want to move, whether it's people that are downsizing, retirees, or people that are having uh, kids upsizing, looking for more space. A lot of talk of people that have wanted to move over the last couple of years that haven't moved because of rates and thinking that uh, maybe some of these people are just going to bite the bullet and that we actually might see a lot more new listings come to the market springtime. But that hasn't happened. And so, and I've actually talked to quite a few agents across the country, talked to one in Michigan today, hearing the same thing. So it sounds like the market might be slowing down a little bit sooner this year. Sales are slightly down month over month and year over year. Although inventory for this time of year is the highest that we've seen in the last three years. So if you're new to the market, if you're just shopping online, it might feel like there's a quite a bit to look at. A lot of that stuff's been sitting on the market for a while, not seeing a whole lot of new listings. And with what we're seeing with the current, the most recent data, probably not any reason to expect that we might see that change for the rest of the year. So although inventory is high, it's probably going to mostly be older inventory. And despite all of that, we're still seeing a fair amount of competition. We've written offers from the Olympic Peninsula in Washington all the way down to Southern Oregon in the past month or so. There's definitely some deals out there to be had, but there's still multiple offer situations. It is still competitive out there. Now, it's not like it was a couple of years ago where you might bump into 8, 10, 12. You heard stories of 20 different offers on homes. No, it's, it's two offers, maybe three offers, uh, but that is enough, of course, to, to make a difference in the price that you pay. And you're still getting people that are getting heartbroken that are, that are losing out and not getting their offer accepted. So if you've heard uh, my videos before, you've probably heard me say this, uh, the last couple of years, it's sort of been a market of the haves and the have nots. There are homes that are still really competitive and there's a, a number of different factors that we can talk about as to why that is. And there's homes that are really sitting on the market for a long period of time and probably padding that average days on market for the rest of the inventory on the market. And one place that it does look like people might be biting the bullet a, lo a little bit. And there is some data that uh, looks like maybe some people might be biting the bullet uh, in a way, so to speak. We are seeing the average sales prices that are the highest go up slightly. So people are buying slightly more expensive homes. 
and the square footage. The square footage uh, is the highest that it's been in the past three years. So we're seeing really competition at all price ranges, kind of at their starter average price points, but all the way up into like the move up luxury price points as well. Sales year to date are right about where they were a year ago, which is a little bit surprising given rates and how persistent rates have been sticking right around 7%. We know that a couple years ago that everybody was saying that if rates got to five or 6%, I don't even really address that too much. Uh, in these videos anymore it feels like the mainstream sentiment is that the market is not going to crash a couple of years ago you heard a lot of people saying what goes up must come down mostly economists and pundits i don't actually hear a lot of realtors uh expecting the market to crash obviously there's bias in there but realtors are boots on the ground so we can see the competition in ways that others can't so for the most part in these videos don't even really address the market crashing because i think the, the mainstream narrative has finally changed a little bit on that. And people know that the market, uh, for the most part, uh, is going to be balanced. Now, granted, uh, there are some, some markets throughout the country that have seen a decline over the past year or so, but nationwide, and especially around Oregon, homes are still appreciating. Granted, only maybe at a, at a couple of percent per year, but we're just still not seeing year over year declines. So what to expect for buyers and sellers? Buyers first. One thing that I'm seeing with buyers, a couple years ago, I think even if you really weren't privy to all the details and, and all of, of the market conditions, most people still had an idea that there was a frenzy going on and it was a crazy market. And that created a lot of urgency for buyers. I think some of that urgency has subsided at this point. There obviously isn't the frenzy and we aren't, like I said, seeing multiple offers, like a dozen different offers on a home. But anytime there's competition, that still means that you can lose out. And so biggest thing for buyers is you still want to be decisive. Once you find a home that you think is right for you, you want to act as quickly as possible. And in part of doing that is how your buyer's agent, which can be me, communicates with the listing agent. There's a couple of different ways that we can communicate your interest to the listing agent, depending on how much competition we, we potentially want to deal with. Because whenever we show interest in a property, that listing agent is going to take that and they're going to use that to try and drum up as many offers as possible. So having a strategy as to how you communicate with the other side, with your buyer's agent, based on a number of different factors, your budget and your desire to get that property. There's a lot of different ways that you can make an offer on a property. And then just know that there are still deals out there. In a lot of cases, we are seeing sellers concede to buyers. And for all of you sellers, that is gonna be one of your best tools to attract buyers, to make your home as attractive as possible to buyers, is to concede something or to have, in a lot of cases, help with cash, cash to close, cash to buy down the rate. Just understanding what it is that most buyers are needing these days, making that available to those people so that you can draw in as many buyers as possible. So creativity is gonna be important for sellers and price is just as important for sellers as well. I think you probably know the best way to get the most amount of money for your house. I sort of just articulated it to you from the buyer's perspective in that you want to draw in as many buyers as possible. In order to do that, you have to have your home uh, priced competitively. If you're watching this and you wanna talk more about this or you have questions, I invite you to call text email you can find all of the contact information below in the description of this video you can also find a link to our calendar where you can schedule a zoom call which is what people typically do that are coming from outside of the state and if you want to see more videos like this make sure and subscribe a lot of our videos are going to show you what the areas look like tell you the pros and cons of those areas give me a thumbs up lets me know i'm doing a good job and feel free to comment below we'll reply back until next time, take care everyone. I'm gonna leave you with one last thing, a little graphic that the MLS provides us with. Sometimes people like to look at these. Uh, we'll give you an idea of price points for the Portland metropolitan area, including Southwest Washington, kind of by region. All right, take care everyone.